Phil, thanks for sharing part of your uh, Wednesday morning with us, a very busy Wednesday morning, to say the least. Phil, at the top of the show, we were talking about the uh, President Biden administration's efforts to, well, kind of uh, put the lid on some of these uh, uh, um, uh, efforts to continue U.S. Produ produced oil here. And comments from the API uh, uh, summer is saying, again, that this is really just an import more type policy. Can you talk to us about uh, some of the impact that these executive orders could have on energy prices. Yeah, we're definitely going to be monitoring. This means the data is going to be much more important when you come to Wednesdays, where we get the import-export data. We also get, you know, what's happening with capacity utilization. We've seen capacity utilization go up four weeks in a row, which means that they're cracking crude oil for other products. The only problem is the way we interpret the dynamics of the market is that there are rising fears of the coronavirus, the second variant, in Europe and other countries. So people are looking at you know, the U.S. as a safe haven. So the dollar's catching a bit of a bid recently. We're seeing treasuries catch a bid, and especially with today's sell-off, the volatility index bumping up quite a bit. Crude oil might have a bit of pressure on the market. You know, 52.50 has held support, 51.50 below that. But we really think that this is a reopening effort, and we believe that over the next six months, if we can get the, a vaccine rollout, we get a good... Um, you know, distribution of it, people start to become comfortable again, you're going to start to see demand pick up for crude oil. And really, it puts us in the hands of how Saudi Arabia and OPEC react to it. Do they increase production drastically? Or are they going to hold back and allow prices to rise? We're really optimistic on oil, though, to the upside. So talk to me about the potential impact that this could have on some of the individual names. I mean, because we oftentimes tie this back to, well, crude prices, for uh, that matter, tie back to some of these individual companies, the, uh, again, producers specifically, and ultimately the impact that that has on the indices in, in terms of some of the movement we've been seeing. I mean, obviously, they've benefited from the rally we've seen off the pandemic lows. We've kind of run into a little bit of resistance, as you mentioned, in terms of some of the levels you have your eye on. But in terms of some of these individual companies, what do you look like? for generally the way we play it is using like the xle i think that that right. gives you a broad base of companies as a whole i think that it is a uh, a particular you know etf that allows you to add 25 and 50 basis points a time for your capital building up to say a four percent total amount in your portfolio so we really like adding to that we also like you know, some of those master limited partnerships as well. We think that they provide some good steady income. But, you know, we, we like the broad indices. We're very, very optimistic on oil. I think oil is going to be one of your best performers for the first half of, for the first half of the year. That's when your economic data is going to reach its, its best year over a year. And then after that, we go into that third quarter, fourth quarter. We could see a compression of the rate of change on that economic data. That's where people start pounding the table for more stimulus measures, but I don't think we get it. All right. So we're talking stimulus. We're talking uh, vaccine distribution, obviously, major focal points. Uh, I guess uh, I'm wondering if we do run into some concerns or uh, not only with the distribution of the vaccine, but potential some of the variants that are popping up around the world. Ultimately, if this impacts some of the demand narrative or expectations for it to continue to increase. Um, and I guess I'm wondering with the dollar, if it loses some of its momentum to the upside, could these be potential uh, change or game change? as far as some of the trends we've been seeing playing out crude to the upside most notably. Yeah, crude oil to the upside. We'd like to have some call spreads on something like a 5560 go out to June for something specific. I think if you can get the risk to reward ratio, I think that'd be fantastic. You know, it, what's interesting is that, you know, gold futures, they've been selling off because we've got rising, you know, yields on a 10-year note. It has not benefited for any weakness in the dollar, at least since August. Yeah. The, the inflation has been felt in all the other commodities. Look at corn prices, mm -hmm. lumber, everything Copper, out for that there matter. It's really gone. Copper is another one. Yeah. Phil, can you tell me, uh, you know, I was just pointing out at the top of the show, we're looking at gold at the top line here. It's down 13 bucks with the indices. The Russell off more than two and three quarters percent. Is it no longer this flight to quality uh, safe haven type product? I mean, you were just mentioning it didn't really respond much to the dollar recently and some of the price activity that we saw there. What's playing out with gold? I've been really out of gold for like, you know, last couple months. Yeah. I, you know, generally we caught most of that move going up for, you know, two years of it going up. But, you know, if, when you have rising yields, it weighs in on gold. And it's a shame because people are so 
like passionate about gold's got to go up this and that you know it's difficult for me to even have customers they they won't short gold that's yeah. for certain you know because they're too worried something might happen but i think gold futures you really got to look at other um, asset classes out there and with the implied volatility premiums on like u.s equities you know the everyone panics and runs for the door like what we're seeing remember it made all-time highs yesterday really you should be adding on any of these dips on equities and you should be really avoiding gold you know your max position in gold should be like you know maybe 10 percent if it's a con currency but you should be looking at other currencies out there things like the canadian dollar have done fantastic because it's a commodity-based currency yeah, I've been hearing many people say how there's really no reason ever to short gold necessarily. It's more just a bullish stance, accumulate, or kind of a neutral stance. We just sort of are sideline and sit back and watch. Let's talk a little bit about, uh, um, obviously, more stimulus, meaning, in theory, more gas in our tanks. You mentioned how the focus should be on inventories and some of the hard data. Uh, you know, last week we saw the EIA report the first build for the year, but with the EP API yesterday reporting a large draw, I think it was down 5.1. Today, the EIA is expecting a small build, but uh, I think it was 400,000 for consensus. But I guess the question is, should we be focused on one data point? Obviously, does not a trend make kind of thing. And uh, how dialed in should we be on the uh, specific or individual inventory support, uh, specifically the EIA today? You definitely want to look at like that five-year average. I mean, we're like over 57 million barrels in inventory. So there is excess inventory. Right. As that starts to deplete, you're going to see an underlying bid in crude oil going up. Um, you know, the we look at the composite of a whole. You want to look at the data out of the gasoline and also the distillates because distillates could be a reflection of freight travel um, with, you know, with people shipping mm -hmm. things. Mm -hmm. So... Um, and then the gasoline is going to show, you know, that movement around the U.S. as far as trucking and things like that. So I think the data is really important. You know, we put out a nice note on it um, every Wednesday in our Morning Express report. And then, you know, I think that crude oil, I think you got to add on these little corrections that we have. How about uh, crude oil in terms of the inflation narrative and uh, I mean, at these levels right now, the market seems to be pretty accepting of price activity, and it doesn't really seem to be feeding into or fueling, I guess you could say, uh, inflation concerns. Yeah, it hasn't happened yet, but I think it will. That's where we get like, you know, that second, we're going to get that momentum up in crude oil first half of the year. It's going to compress in the back half. And then when you go out to like 2022, that's when I think crude oil reaches like $75 a barrel. I mean, I'm very, very confident that we could see all this play out, especially with, you know, these new, the new administration mm -hmm. and the way we're kind of turning things over into the hands of, you know, the Middle East controlling prices. Yeah.